Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I want to give you 10 tips to become a professional fine art photographer. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So I'm Serge Ramini, a French photographer living in Los Angeles, and I'm very happy because I just got my new New York color book. This is uh, something I've been working on for years. It's my number five fine art coffee table books. I first did Paris, New York in black and white, then I did Venice in color, Los Angeles in color, and now this new New York book. My work is also in 85 galleries around the world through the Yellow Corner galleries and also in Las Vegas with the Tony Carnival Gallery. I make a great living as a fine art photographer and I wanted to give you my 10 best tips on how I made it as a fine art photographer. I struggle a lot at first, so maybe these tips can help you to make it faster if you want to become a fine art photographer. Tip number one, take the decision. I started becoming a fine art photographer at the age of 43, and the only reason why I did it at 43 is that I was hang up on a maybe decision my entire life. Am I gonna be good enough to do it? You know, do I really wanna do it? Do I not wanna do it? You know, I was not decided. With decision comes action. No matter how much time it's gonna take you, if you decide and you get all the maybes out of the way, action will happen. The decision is the most important step because I could have done it years before if I had decided before. So, number one, decision. Number two, find a personal project. I find that most of the job that I get today is always by what I call a personal assignment. I was an interior design photographer for many years. What I mean by finding a personal project is that when I started fine art photography, I was a salesman selling website two hotels in some of the nicest locations in Paris. And I had my scooter and I would just go after work, walk around and take photos of Paris. It took me like three to four years, but that was my personal project. Photos of Paris in the long run is what gave me the most money and the most fame, whatever, the most success. I got paid to do weddings. I got paid to do interior designs. You know, I was a salesman. I had many things to make a living. The Paris for the first years were just, you know, personal projects and nothing else. Last week, I sold this photo to a tea brand. I shot this photo nine years ago and I sold it for $4,000 because, you know, they saw my work in a gallery and you never know what's going to happen. And if you do something that you really like, whatever the personal project is, that's probably what your fun art photos or your books is going to be about. So find a good personal project. Three, Learn until you're happy with your work. What I mean by that is, you know, when I started, I was a terrible photographer. This is some of my first photos. You know, it's just not great work. And it took me two, two, three years to first find mentors that I really like, you know, photographers that I really admire, buy their tutorials, reverse engineering what they're doing, you know, and just train. And I had this practice of no matter what, I would watch at least two tutorials per day. I would shoot every day and watch two tutorials per day. If you think you don't have time, try to at least learn 10 minutes per day. Anybody's got 10 minutes and that will help you to improve your photos. I discovered that when I cease to watch tutorials, my photography stays the same. If I want to improve my photography, so even today, although I've got five published books and my work is in 85 galleries around the world, I still buy tutorials and I still watch tutorials and I still try to improve my craft or go into areas which I'm really not good at. You know, daily learning is the key. Tip number four, steal like an artist. I find the fastest way to learn is to find people that you like, try to copy them at first, and in the process of copying, you will find your own voice. I studied all the books from Ansel Adams and I studied his techniques, you know, and I really tried to copy his work. And in the process, you know, I sort of found my own voice because I added extra loan exposure, for example, which is something Ansel was not doing. Every being is different. There's nothing wrong with trying to copy something you admire because in the process, you will find your own voice. You know, for example, this is Joel Grimes, one of my favorite, you know, a portrait photographer. And you know, this is me trying to copy him and, you know, and I finally did this kind of portraits, you know, or Eric Almas, you know, I'm a huge fan of Eric Almas and I've tried to sort of copy his work and eventually found my own voice of doing this kind of photography. And I'm doing this over and over and over. I find somebody that I like, I study his techniques, I try to copy his work and I find my own voice. Tip number five, don't give up your day job quite yet. It took me four to five years of getting better and better and watching tutorials and taking photos of Paris until I had a body of work that I really, really liked. 
The first years I started, I kept my day job where from nine to six, I was a salesman and I would take photos in the evening, watch tutorial every evening, you know, and I did this for a couple of years. I didn't give it because I needed the money, you know, four kids, a uh, big house, you know, mortgage, things to provide. So while you're doing your personal projects, while you're getting better, keep your day job, of course. Tip number six, or that's an alternative, start making money with interior designs or wedding photography. I think today, and that's really just my viewpoint, that if you want to become a professional photographer, you really just want to make money with photos and you're obsessed with that and that's the only thing you want. You know, you don't want to have another day job or you're in your 20s and this is what you really want to do. Then the best is to start doing the interior design photography. I find there's so much real estate agency that you know just needs good photos. I had a friend here in Los Angeles, and this is a true story, and I'm actually gonna do a whole episode just on that, which I trained as a real estate photographer. He also trained on his own, and he's now making between twenty to $30,000 a month as a real estate photographer here in Los Angeles, just working for real estate agents. Uh, not even doing like I was doing hotels or restaurants, just real estate agencies, twenty to $30,000 per month. Interior design is a great way to start making money with photography because all these real estate agents, they need great photos. The way I've seen people making money is through weddings. Uh, I've done a few, got paid for a few weddings. It's not really my thing, but I know some people started making good money before becoming a fine art photographer with weddings. That could be also another way to do it, but I'm not an expert at it, so don't follow my advice on this. I'm more an expert into interior design. Tip number seven, focus on Instagram and Google+. Now, why do I mean that? Because Instagram is a great way to attract attention. The bigger is your Instagram following, more chance the gallery is gonna take you down the road because then they know you can also make stories and get people in their gallery, which is totally true. Now, the as a social network that actually brought me the most money, and this is gonna be crazy to you guys, is Google+. Why? Google+, Plus is dead as a social network. However, Google+, Plus helps Google Image. If you post photos with good keywords on Google+, Plus, there is a chance that you will be coming up in Google Images. Last week, I got this photo bought by a tea company in Paris for $4,000, and they found me through Google Image. All the book deals that I got was from a company called Tenhaus in Germany, and they found me through Google Image. Google Image brought me more business than anything, than Flickr, than Instagram, than anything in the world. And the fastest way to get good SEO at Google Image is to use Google+. You even have an app, and I'll put the link down below, called If This and That, which is free, which takes your photo from Instagram and automatically puts them on Google+, so that they automatically appear on Google Image. It's just fast and easy, so you can just post on Instagram and it's gonna be there. So, you know, whatever your niche is, people use Google Image a lot and they will find your work if you're good in that niche. Eight, get published in magazine. And that is so much easier than you can think. Magazines needs content. I have been published in over 400 magazines. And in fact, when I got my first immigration O1 visa was because I got published in five big magazines in Paris. Now, how that I did that is so easy. I watched a story from Joel Grimes. Uh, he was with Scott Kelmy, two of my good buddies today. And he was telling this story, that the way he was getting work as a commercial photographer, was that he would take five photos, some of his best work, print them, and go into a new store, find all the magazines he wanted to work with, and every Monday he would send one of his print to the editor-in-chief with a handwriting letter saying, this is who I am, I would love to work with you. And every Monday, to the same editor-in-chief, he would send a photo. So I heard this lecture from Joel Grimm. I'm like, okay, how I can apply this to fine art photography? So I went into the first bookstore I can find, which was really close to my house. I bought five magazines, which was French uh, sort of photography magazines. We only have five. I remember it was a Sunday afternoon. I was bored. It was raining outside. I had a printer. I printed five of my best photos. I put them into an envelope with a CD that was at the time it was CD, and I wrote a handwriting letter saying, this is who I am, I've been doing this Paris project for many years, I give you the authorization to publish my work, you know, here is my work, and it was printed in the envelopes. I posted it to the five magazines. Out of the five, three published me, actually four published me in the long run, but three published me right away, including one magazine that did a 16-page article on me. It was so much, that's how I got my first immigration visa to come to the USA. It took me three hours. 
you know, of course you do that when you have got a good body of work, but getting into magazines is going to help you down the road also to get a gallery or even a publisher. Tip number nine, you can also, you know, as you get good, you can do tutorials and you can sell them, you know, using website like Kajabi or uh, Teachable to sell your knowledge, you know, as you grow, because, you know, an expert is only somebody who's just a few steps away of you in the game. So you can just also teach like I'm doing, I'm making great income with my tutorials. You know, it's a great expert income on top of all the fine art stuff, you know, and as you get good, you can use that to just share your work, your vision, and how you went about it and sell your tutorials on Udemy, uh, on your own website, you know, using a technology like Teachable or Kajabi. It's a great thing to do. Tip number 10, finally, contact the galleries. But by then, you have a great body of work, you got published, you got a decent following on social media. When I got into the Yellow Corner Gallery, I had been harassing the owner for a year. It's only when he saw me growing on social media that he wrote me back and accepted to do the job. Now, something magical happened at that time, which I hope is gonna happen for you. Let me tell you that one little story. I believe that if you follow your passion, these kind of things will happen to you. Because when you do what you love, what happens is that there's so much positivity in your life that positive things start happening. So here's the story. So I harassed Yellow Corner for a full year to get into their door. My YouTube channel grew up, exploded completely to 200,000 followers. And I thought that their YouTube channel was only 5,000 followers. So I sent an email says, you know, I grew up to 200,000 following on YouTube. You know, I really want to work with you. And I send the email and I am not kidding. In about 10 seconds from the moment I press send, my phone rang and it was the owner of the Yellow Corner Gallery. He says, well, let's meet. We met two days later. He says, okay, I'll take three photos from you to check them out. He took three photos. The next week he calls me and says, you know, I've been looking at your work and you got a good decent body of work on Paris. I've always wanted to get into publishing. You know, we've only, we are only galleries. We're not, we're looking for a co-publisher. I'm the friend with the Flammarion. Flammarion is a huge publisher in France and I'm going to show them your photos. I'm like, Yes, I would love to do that. The week after he comes back to me, he says, I met with Flammarion. They love your work. They want to make a book about Paris. I'm like, all right. So that was like on a Wednesday. On a Thursday, I get an email from somebody who found me on Google Image called Ten House. Uh, and uh, he says, I want to make a book about Paris. I answered, I said, thank you very much, but I'm already booked because on Tuesday, I'm signing a book deal with Flammarion, biggest publisher in France. Tenaus writes me back and says, no, you're not going to sign with Flammarion. I am four times bigger than them. We are an international coffee table book company in Germany, and we have a distribution that's worldwide. I am flying to Paris tomorrow. I'm going to meet with these guys in Yellow Corner, and I'm going to convince them to co-publish with me and not with Flammarion. I said, are you kidding? You're flying tomorrow? He flew the next day with two of his assistants or executive, and I find myself in this lunch with the two owners of the Yellow Corner Galleries and the three guys from the, this publishing company. I just met Yellow Corner like two weeks before. They, I didn't even know the other owner. Anyway, so we have this incredible lunch and they said, we like search work. We want to do Paris and New York. I'm like, two books? I'm all for it. And after this lunch, the guys from Yellow Corner came back to me and says, like, who are you? Like, these guys flew from Germany just to meet you? You know what? I'm going to take 30 photos from you. Not just three, but 30 photos from you. And that day my life changed because the money from the 30 photos plus the two book deal was way more money than I ever did as a salesman before. And this is how I got really into fun art. So I believe things like this can happen to you, you know, and I hope these 10 tips can help you. There is a video I did years ago called Secret to Interior Design Photography. It's got over 469,000 views. I'm really happy with these videos. If you want to start making money right away with interior design, this video maybe can help you. You should check it out by clicking here. Okay, also, if you want to know more about my lifetime story, I have a, put a link in the description, which is a one hour webinar where I go into this kind of details, a lot more into details into my life story and give you a whole bunch of more tips. Thank you for listening and watch that interior design video. I think you'll love it.